Hello, Dave and Tim here with the Single Malt Review, and we're returning once again to the Highlands of Scotland for something independently bottled and cask strength and hopefully quite excellent. Yeah, we're getting into the getting into good stuff here. Yeah. Um, it is a Highland whiskey. It's a bit of an in, bit of a bit of a whiskey unto itself, though. It is Ard Moor, although mm. they have spelt it very strangely. They've gone with the Gaelic spelling of yeah. that there, so um, possibly for trademark reasons. I'm not independent absolutely bottling sure. Or? Yeah, that's that's true. Although I have seen lots of independent bottles that just say Ardmore normally, yeah. so I think they might have just done it as a bit of a bit of a laugh here. But yeah. anyway, what it is is um, Ardmore, pretty peculiar whiskey to begin with. One of the very very few typically peated, in that I mean always peated or peated as a standard um, single malts, and also mm -hmm. odd in that this one has been aged in none other than a. Lefroy barrel. Yeah. So you can infer a wee bit from that Lefroy barrel. If it's a barrel, that means bourbon because mm. the only barrels um, that are named so, that are not butts or hogsheads or anything like that, um, they are almost always going to be bourbon mm. barrels because that's how barrels come. So the, um, the most common thing for whiskey to be aged in now. So this thing's come second hand from Lefroy, mm. so it is a third fill at best, and you can, <laughs> given the, the pallor yeah. of the whiskey, you can really sort of I'll hold that one a wee bit yeah. closer. It is quite a pale whiskey, especially considering these numbers. So this is eight years old, distilled uh, December 2009, and then bottled in June 2018. For those keeping track of the cask reference of this one, it is cask number 707919. Mm. There were 122 bottles filled out of this cask, and the strength is something else. This is 59.4% ABV. Yeah, so this is blisteringly potent. This has not budged, no. really, since it was distilled, which so presumably... To have such a, a pale, pale gold colour to it after eight years and at this strength, that means that is a you know, that barrel has um, yeah. gifted little to the colour. We've had whiskey before which has been matured or finished in barrels which formerly held peated whiskey. Uh, Pendellum springs to mind as one of the examples where there's an offering which is not in itself peated, but the barrel mm. which has been matured in once held peated whiskey. And in so, that case, not no small quantity of character was imparted yes. over. So it'd be a bit difficult to detect here, I think, mm. because we're dealing with peated whiskey aged in a peated whiskey yeah. cask. Um, the levels of peat are pretty disparate, though. Mm. The Ardmore, that's a, as I look at my cheat sheet here, that's uh, fairly lightly peated. Their PPM, which is parts per million phenolics, which is sort of your, your peat flavour, so I guess. Yeah. Um, that's sort of typically 12 to 14, which mm. is on the low end of the scale for a for something that is a peated whiskey. Noticeably peaty, but not a peated yeah, salt. Not, not a blow your head off peat. Um, Lefroy, that's typically 45, or yeah. a little bit higher, depending on what they're making. So um, way, way more than this twice about what they're doing. a third to a quarter as peaty, the whiskey in here at least, compared to the cask, what was previously in the yeah. cask, which has been used to mature it. Slightly confusing, but hey... And I think I can smell a little bit of Lefroy already. Ooh, yeah, there is a distinct maritime quality you would not expect yeah. from a Highland peated whiskey. Because the mm. the peat that Ardmore uses is not the same peat that Isla uses, mm. and it has quite different characteristics. It's much drier. It's not tangy in the way that the very sort of iodine-rich peats yeah. of Isla have. Isla peat I associate with being oily, slightly fishy, and fairly salty, much mm -hmm. more oceanic than the uh, anything matured on the mainland. Yeah. Whereas Ardmore, that's more mm. of a dry, kindling kind yeah. of driftwood thing. There's more minerality to it. Yeah. Whereas here, there's a bit of both. There's actually a faint whiff of two-stroke motor oil. If you're yeah, there's uh, sort of there's a slightly yeah. sort of a greasy, mm. greasy element to it. Normally, it's not something you'd look for and something you're going to actually consume, take into your body and, and well, metabolize. But in this case, it's then, a fascinating. Uh, if you're a, if you're an island drinker, then you will you will take just the worst into yeah. your body because the filthier the better for most mm. most drinkers of Isla whiskey. But we won't get into that yeah. one here. But well, that's uh, not as searing on the old sinuses as I thought it might be, considering just how no, it's remarkably calm, unbelievably yeah. strong it is by Scotch standards. I think we're probably lucky that it's a pretty cool day yeah. over here as we descend into winter, but um, it is, even so, remarkably, remarkably mm. gentle on the nose. There's no way it can be like that on the palate, because no. it's just there's not scientifically but possible. Let's find out what 59.4% ABV peated okay. whiskey does. You know, ridiculously, that's that is not so, so bad. Gentle. Yeah, yeah. You could. Ooh, here comes some heat. Oh wow! 
Okay, that's got prickly at the end. I mean, mm. it warms on the way down, but it's almost only in the finish that the mm. alcohol super comes out. There's a delayed reaction. It's sort of, at first, there's a hit of floral citrus, some sweetness, some delicate char. Then it blossoms into this prickle, like you've taken some popping candy or something like that, which has just slowly begun to react and explode across the tongue. That is really what this is like. It's a... The alcohol heat is there, but it's delayed. And it's also, actually, honestly, a bit more subdued than you might yeah. expect for something this potent. That is, remarkably, 100% drinkable at almost yeah. almost 60% ABV. Mm. That is 120 proof, almost. Yeah. Um, that is just wonkers strong. So that's pretty interesting, actually. It is, yeah. Especially and for a whiskey that's almost entirely spirit-driven as well, given how less yeah. character came from the cast. And peated, which normally adds a degree of harshness... And some intensity, mm. some you know, some fire, which is going to challenge your taste buds. I haven't had much water, just enough to bring things down a little. So I don't want to dull mm. this completely, since it wasn't too much of an assault. No. I've added a wee bit more, so we should have a good comparison yeah. here. I'm just waiting, waiting for the waiting for the haze here, which is slowly developing. Mm. It may even require more water to probably haze up because it's still pretty strong, even with a bit of water yeah. um, added in. I mean, you could add a full, roughly. Nearly half a volume. You could of almost, take it down to you could almost yeah. do a fifty percent, and you still have a fairly mm. strong spirit. So really, it's yeah. You know, in terms of number of bottles of whiskey you get per bottle, it's almost like whiskey concentrate. Mm. Ooh, wow! That if is, anything, mm. it's a little more jagged with the water in. The it's heat a lot keener has, edged. That heat has gone entirely, but now it's a slow and steady sort of a peat journey. It starts off with some puffs of smoke, expands into this coal and tar and soot, then wafts away into just a passing fug of um, wood smoke and a little bit of sulphur. It's just, yeah, it's a, it's a real passing train of a whiskey now. No, it is. It's, it must just be in terms of its character because mm. there can only be that much PPM level hiding in the wood, mm. right? It's got to be fairly microscopic, but yeah. I think just the mental association... Every, I mean, you can't think of Laphroaig and not think of peated whiskey. Mm. That's just not possible. But we know for a fact that you can put an utterly unpeated whiskey into a barrel previously used for mm. peated whiskey and get a noticeably peaty result. And here, we're adding peat upon peat. And noticeably and peaty is what they've oh, got, yeah. yeah. Um, it is... It's almost like they've found out how to make Colila. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I'm getting out of this, especially with mm. water. There's a lot of quite sweet citrus coming out of here. It's not as uh, greasy as I'm used to from Kalila. It's the, the body somehow mm. is even a bit lighter, despite being cast strength. This is quite light on my tongue. It's not sitting and clinging to the inside of my mouth like yeah. Vaseline, in the way some of those heavy, grubby Isla whiskies do. It's like do. they've made Kalila, but they've sort of, without the smoky bacon flavour, they've, they've managed to somehow forged this sort of lovely lemon citrus that Colila is normally the sort of exclusive holders of. It's almost, um, like, almost like some sort of whiskey Frankenstein or whiskey necromancy where I've taken an, a um, Highland whiskey and somehow imbued it with the spirit or the internal essence yeah. of some uh, Isla. They've, they've done so a so weird so, thing, yeah. that's for sure. It's a, it's a real chimera of a whiskey. It's probably something that was never really meant to see the light mm. of day. This was probably meant to boost Ardbeg yeah. single malt or simply boost teachers um, to bring the bring the more character. Yeah. Um, or did I say Ardbeg? It's, you very, said, yeah. it's <laughs> very naughty. Ardmore, of course. Um, it's a very clear association. But, yeah. Yeah, the, the fact that this cask was picked up was something of an irregularity. And yeah. here is the bad news for anyone wanting to sort mm. of seize upon what was an extremely affordable single cask bottle of whiskey. Um, this was uh, hand-picked out and only two, um, two shops, in fact, they went halves on mm. this cask. One of them just happened to be Whiskey Galore, our local, yeah. way down here in New Zealand. Who, in fact, chose this cask. They yeah, did, the here. Did, the, did the picking here. Mm. And uh, the other one, I think, went to a Taiwanese um, outlet. Mm. Although I may be, I may be wrong. It went somewhere in more of the um, the Asia Pacific kind of a region. Mm. And um, it was the the ones. What did the bottling? Yeah. Was the single malts of Scotland, which is uh, Elixir Drinks, mm. which should ring bells for anyone. Um, yeah. Into their classy whiskies, they do the like, elements of Viola. Among Elixir other Distillers of London. Yeah. Hmm. So um, that means if you're not 
where we are, or mm. in a very specific area of Taiwan, assuming that's where it did go, uh, this is not to be had. Mm. So not readily, at least. There's probably some out there. People probably take ways and means, but it's probably well, probably available internationally. I mean, that, that yeah, said, to, 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 give, um, to give Whiskey Galore a free plug, mm. you can order internationally. They'll post it mm. over. So cool. it's not, not all that, not all yeah. that unattainable. Oh, they have terrible trouble with bottles being bought up internationally oh, sometimes oh, because they right. have such a good allocation. Huh. Um, you get a lot yeah. of um, people trying to trying to hoard their whiskeys sometimes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But it is it really is quite an interesting animal, quite an interesting yeah. exercise in making a completely different whisky out of the sort of the products of two others. Mm. Um, it's almost you've gotten just about as much character as you would if you made a blended malt between these two distilleries. Only you don't have to call it that because no. the, the whiskey inside the barrel is not counted. If you if you eye drop drop a whiskey into a barrel, that's a blended malt. Hmm. If you put it into a barrel just soaked, teeming with other spirit, that's not. Um, that neither has to be disclosed nor talked about nor whatever. They obviously do. Yeah. And they make direct allusion to it. But um, in terms of the whiskey legality, that's completely fine. It's so yeah. um, there's sort of... Brings to term the brings the idea of this scary, scary idea of fusion... Mm-hmm. Distilleries, you know, they get together, they do the fusion dance, and suddenly, suddenly, we have a completely different um, distillery character because you've combined one with the other. Just think of the mathematical, the, the number, just the mm-hmm. zeros multiplying. Um, it's almost like, yeah, it's too much. It's too much to even mm-hmm. contemplate. So. Um, in that respect, I hope this doesn't catch on because it would make our job very, very difficult, <laughs> um, and it would make someone who's into um, into the the already dangerous game of blind tasting like me uh, it would, it would a nightmare, a living, waking nightmare. But so, as yeah. an exercise in modern day alchemy, what we have here is kind of a marvel. So we've got mm. something which encapsulates so much of the Highland character of Ardmore, but also bringing in just spades of Lefroy, but somehow producing a whiskey which is eminently drinkable at what is normally an eye-watering uh, proof yeah. for a Scotch whiskey. I think it's, we can safely call this better than the sum of its parts. Yeah. I don't really like young Ardmore and I don't really like young Lefroy. Um, I just I think both of those whiskies don't really get interesting until they've got at least, at least 10 years under their belt. This one, obviously not 10 years, it's very, very young Ardmore whiskey, eight. Yeah. Well, not not very young, but it's younger than younger than not, and very very spirit driven. And yet, with that bit of boost from the Lefroy cask, it is more than holding its own as yes. a complete complete whiskey. Um, and I'm enjoying it just fine, just fine enough to give it an 86. Mm. It's a real real goer of a single cask. Yeah. What do you think? I'm going to go a little higher. This one for me rates a 90 mm. because of just how expertly and surprisingly it combines so many disparate components into this uh, quite standalone whole and just how readily approachable and drinkable it is. It's uh, not an abysmally over peated monstrosity, but it is certainly not wanting for peat. It's certainly it's a peat experience, yeah. but delivered via a wholly unique uh, vehicle. Well then. That just about wraps it up for it this um, probably sandy for everyone viewing. It was a trap all along. Mm. Unattainable bottle of um, mutant Franken Ardmore. Um, well, at the very least, hope you enjoyed it vicariously through us, if nothing else. Mm, well, that's what we're here for. Mm. Should have called it a, a better name, really, than Single Malt Review. It's cursed us now. Anyway, never mind. We'll get on to something next. We'll see what's going into Dave's placeholder hole um, shortly. Slanger, we'll be right back.